Well, hello folks. In a previous video, I discussed replacing my field flattener focal reducer combo with just a field flattener for galaxy season. So I had my, here's my field flattener focal reducer combo. You can get a closer look at it. It's the AstroTech version. And it was specifically designed for my telescope. Yeah, I, have I had really good luck with it and it's very high quality. I replaced it with a Hotec field flattener uh, unfortunately, Astrotech didn't design one specifically for this scope, nor did they have any regular ones in stock. Uh, you want to replace it, or if you're going to get something like this, a piece of glass, or you want to get something that's pretty good or pretty high quality, and Hotec makes pretty good products. And this one wasn't too expensive. Uh, Takahashi makes some really good ones, but you're, boy, are you really going to pay the price for those? They're like a thousand bucks. But this one was... Um, relatively inexpensive. I think it was $160. You can expect to spend over $100 on a decent flattener or focal reducer. You don't want to skimp out on something like that. Okay, so why am I just going with a field flattener now rather than the focal reducer? And that's what I want to talk about specifically. I went on these internet forums and boy did I get an earful or readful, if you will, of people stating their opinions and uh, some people just saying stuff incorrectly or mis misunderstanding stuff. And it is very confusing, this field flattener versus focal reducer. Like, what actually does a focal reducer do? And I used a focal reducer for the past four or actually five years now on pretty much every object I ever took through a telescope. I probably didn't need to do that. And I'll tell you why, or I'll discuss why, and uh, as I said, I want to discuss really what a focal reducer actually does in, in detail. And a lot of the problems that I ran into when I was doing some research for the past few weeks was I was reading all these forums, and there wasn't a lot of pictures or diagrams showing exactly what's going on, and people were just talking about it and throwing in some mathematical equations in there, but... Uh, I, I, I want to show you some diagrams and maybe this will clear things up what a focal reducer actually does. My name is Kurt Zapatello and you're watching AstroQuest One. Well, hello, I'm back and let me go over uh, what's going on here. First off, uh, again, I'd like to thank Gary Eim, the Texas astronomer who really helped me out with this. I, I greatly appreciate what he's done uh, with it, helping me out. And also, I'm going to try to do this in a, one or two takes, so please forgive me if I stumble over my words a bit. All right, here's my model of my telescope. It's a refractor, and it has an objective lens on the front end. If it was a reflector, the yeah, the objective would be in the back, but I want to do my telescope because I'm most familiar with it. Plus, it's the simplest to do the light ray diagrams, which I'm going to show you right now. So you have your light coming in, hits the objective. The objective lens, or in my case, concentrates all the light into a single point. This point is known as the focal point. And that's where you'd put your camera sensor. The camera sensor would be right on the focal point. If you had, if you're doing visual astronomy and you had a eyepiece, it would be set behind the focal point a bit. Okay, so now what? Well, let's talk about the focal length. The focal length is determined by where the focal point is and where you have the objective. So in my case, my AT115, the focal length is 805 millimeters. The other thing that I want to talk about is the aperture. The aperture is the diameter of your objective. And in my case, it's 115 millimeters. Now, in order to get the famous focal ratio, you take the focal length and divide it by the aperture. So you take 805 divided by 115 and you would get 7. So my refractor is F7. Okay, and what about the usage of the focal reducer? So in my little 
highly exaggerated, not to scale diagram here. I put the focal reducer right here. So I added a focal reducer. And what the focal reducer does, it sort of concentrates the light rays. Notice how where the focal point is compared to where the focal point is without the focal reducer. Without the focal reducer, the focal point is set back much further. With the focal reducer, it's concentrated, so it's much closer. Okay, so it has some other effects as well. For example, it would it sort of moves the objective lens. So if the objective lens was originally here, I mean, it's still here, it's not changing, but it gives the apparent movement of the objective lens, it moves it closer to the focal reducer. And I just called it, I labeled it the virtual objective lens. So if you draw the light rays coming from the focal point up to where the virtual objective lens would be, the, the lens would still be 115 millimeters. So the aperture has not changed. What has changed was the focal length. Focal length is now 644 millimeters. And if you take 644 and divide that by 115, you're going to get f5.6 for the F ratio, the focal ratio. The other effect that using the focal reducer has is it makes the field of view of your object much larger. So that's one of the great benefits of using these focal reducers. All right, now let's talk about the sensor and some other stuff. By the way, this these diagrams are actually on my website, which I will share the link with you. So you can actually look at these in more detail, as well as I've got a whole written log of what I'm saying too. So that's all there as well. All right, what is the sensor? The sensor is actually a grid of millions of tiny square pixels. And each pixel is composed of some semiconductor material which absorbs photons. Uh, and there's and, and these photons, what they do is when they hit this this semiconductor material, it frees up electrons. And that's known as the photoelectric effect from Einstein. Anyways, these are then stored in these uh, potential wells. And you can think of the pixel as a bucket. So a bucket holding water, only this time it's holding photons. And what the pixel does is it uh, converts the, or it sends it to an amplifier and it takes that analog data and converts it to digital uh, data, which you can make your image with. Now, one thing I found out about doing this research is that each pixel can only hold a, a maximum amount of photons. And so when, uh, when it's filled, uh, the pixel is saturated. All right, let's take a look at my camera in detail here. I have the ASI 1600, and here's the sensor. This is the meat and potatoes of this uh, camera here. And the sensor size is 17.7 mil, millimeters by 13.4 millimeters. Diagonal is 21.9 millimeters. Sometimes I measure it that way. And the pixel array is 44,656 by 3,000. 3,520 pixels. So altogether, there is over 16 million pixels on this thing. And each pixel is only 3.8 micrometers. That's one millionth of a meter. Okay, let's show you another highly exaggerated, not to scale at all diagram. It's only for tutorial purposes here, or conceptual purposes. But this, this diagram here, it this side shows what it looks like with a focal reducer. This is my representation with a focal reducer. And this is a representation of an object without the focal reducer. This is the Medusa Nebula. I took this uh, a couple weeks ago. And the one with the focal reducer, it concentrates the light. I think I mentioned that in figure one. And what I mean by concentrating the light, I mean all the light from that object, it's concentrated on a fewer number of pixels. If you see over here, there's probably only four or five pixels that that image is projected on. Whereas without the focal reducer, the image is projected on nine or 10 pixels. 
So that's what I mean by concentrated, and that has some great effect on everything. For example, with the focal reducer, it, it fills the pixels faster, and that's not always a good thing because if it has uh, more photons hitting fewer pixels, they're going to saturate quicker. And that means the additional photons that you would have captured will be wasted. But if you're doing something small like galaxies, galaxy season is coming up, and that's why I bought the new field flattener without the focal reducer, because I want to get closer in. And you might say, well, why not just take this image and crop it? Well, let's take a look at these individual pixels here. If you'll notice, on this one with a field flattener or focal reducer, the Medusa is in this pixel, this pixel, this pixel, and this pixel. So that's about four pixels and maybe a little bit in this pixel over here. So five pixels it's, is the Medusa is taking up with the focal reducer. Without the focal reducer, it's taking up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and maybe 10. So it's taking up 10 pixels. In this highly exaggerated, not to scale drawing diagram. So, without the focal reducer, you're getting more detail because your pixels are the things that are giving you the detail. I should also mention something about focal ratio versus f stop for camera lenses. Camera lenses, they're measured in f stops, which a lot of people think, oh, it's just the focal ratio. Well, the difference is this. When you change the f-stop on a camera lens, you're actually changing the aperture of the camera lens. When you're changing the focal ratio on a telescope with a focal reducer, that aperture stays the same. You're not changing the aperture like you are in the uh, camera lens. What you are changing with the telescope and the focal reducer is you're changing the focal length. So that's the big difference. Okay, a couple other things I should mention, which I did not really focus in on. I didn't mention noise, signal to noise ratio, read noise, total noise, pixel scale, or some of those calculations uh, that go along with this for optimal performance. And I didn't because I wanted to keep things uh, more or less to the focal reducer and the light rays, those things that I just mentioned, the signal to noise ratio, that's really important for object specific stuff. If you're really going to, um, you know, whether you want to use a focal reducer on a specific object. It's, and so it's very important, but I just didn't want to talk about that. I did put some links on, in, in this, on here and I'll put them on the uh, at the end in the comments section so you can read more about that from people who know much more about the calculating signal to noise ratio and stuff like that. Okay, the last slide I want to show you, this is a picture taken from Gary Eim and his telescope. He has he took a picture of a galaxy with uh, his Takahisi 130 refractor, and he's got a 11-inch uh, edge, and this is the object with the focal reducer, and this is the object without the focal reducer. And it's kind of hard to see, actually, in this. You, you really need to download the image and you know, really look at it closely. But um, uh, both of these are much more detailed than the TAC, which makes some sense. It's, this is a very small galaxy indeed. The one with the focal reducer is brighter. Uh, however, if you looked at it, like I said, it's hard to see with this. You really need to download it. If you look at it with the focal reducer you can see more detail on this and it also seems less noisy when it's less noisy closer in as well so very interesting okay so what are my final thoughts on a focal reducer well you gotta ask yourself why'd you get it or why do you want one if your answer was to increase the field of view well it certainly does that and that's what it was designed for if your answer was to speed things up, well, it's not called a speed enhancer. Okay, so my take is this. If you've got a very large object, like a nebula, use the focal reducer, 
if you've got a very small object like a galaxy where you're, you, you want some really fine detail and good resolution, then go without the reducer. If you've got a mid-range object, well, that's where it's kind of tricky. Do you use it or not? Well, what I plan to do is if I've already got my imaging train set up with the focal reducer, I'm going to keep it on. And if I've already got my train set up and it does not have the focal reducer, I'm going to leave it off. Now, that's not the most scientific or the, probably the best optimal technical way to do it, but it's probably the most practical for me anyways. I think that's all, and I hope I didn't do, confuse you or do any too much double talk in here, but uh, we'll see you later. Galaxy season, which is exactly what's coming up and why I bought the field flattener without the focal reducer. That's what I intend to do. I intend to use without not, not have a focal reducer. Man, Kurt, you just suck.